Now the DJI Mini 4 Pro, I've been flying this drone out for quite some time and although I really do like this drone, there are some things about it that I don't particularly like as well. Hopefully some of these could maybe get addressed, could get fixed, or we might see these on future versions. Let's get into it. So this video is not going to be a knock at the Mini 4 Pro. I'm not going to be saying to you, don't go and buy this. This drone for the size of it is fantastic. The features that we have in here, but no product is perfect. And this drone isn't perfect either. So with every product that comes out, we're getting closer and closer to that, say, ideal drone, what we really do want. But every drone has its drawbacks and every drone could be improved. So that's exactly what this video is about today. First problem has been around for the last few years, so it's not isolated to just the Mini 4 Pro. But let's just say, for instance, you're using the Mini 4 Pro and you're tracking yourself. You might be running, you might be on a bike, you might be cycling, you might be in a car. The tracking on here is fantastic. But when you're moving around, your home location is going to be also changing as well. Now, the way the home location works is if you was to have a disconnect, that drone will automatically return back to you. We know that, that's a fantastic feature. But the downside to that is, is that we don't have updated automatic home points. And we had this feature years ago on the DJI Spark. Who remembers that drone? I had that drone, a fantastic drone. We had that feature on that. We don't have it on the DJI Mini 4 Pro. Now what that did is, say you were cycling your bike and the drone is tracking and following you, it would automatically update the home point on the controller so the drone knew that you were probably, what, 10 meters away from that drone. You weren't a mile back at the original home point. And that's how it works on here. And I'm sure this could be added with a firmware update or a prompt on the screen. So as you're cycling your bike and the drone is actually following you, it's automatically updating that home point. Otherwise, you could have the drone tracking you for say five minutes down the road, but the drone will automatically think that your home point is two miles away. So your battery life will be on like 20%. It will be rapidly decreasing because the drone thinks that it's gonna take such amount of power and distance to get all the way back to that home location. When in fact, the drone is like 10 meters away from you. It's so frustrating. So what you have to do currently is to go onto the drone, go into settings, scroll down to home point, update home point, click on the remote control icon, and then it will update. Now that isn't the most like seamless, fantastic way of doing that when you're cycling a bloody bike. Now, a few years ago, when the Mini 3 Pro was released, we saw this, the DJI RC controller. This is fantastic because the screen was built in, the antennas were built in, and it took away the need for actually using your phone when you're flying your drones. Everything was built in now, much better. And then when the Mini 4 Pro came out, we saw the RC2 controller. So this had a new chip inside of it, the same screen, the same brightness, but now external antennas. So the signal was better, everything was great. And the need for actually using the DJI RC Pro controller was no longer needed really. I mean, this doesn't support the Mini 4 Pro, but this was a lot faster, but also the downside is it's much bigger and much heavier to actually move around. Now, unfortunately, I've done a recent video on this, with all the firmware updates and features that we've seen added to the Mini 4 Pro, the RC2 controller is so slow and laggy and buggy now. And it's not just me. The recent video, loads of people were actually responding saying they've had the same issue. So it can take nearly up to a minute for the actual time it takes for this to turn on, boot up, and be ready to actually connect to this. This was much slower than it used to be. And that can also mean the difference between getting the shot and not, but also just navigating through the menus. Everything on here just seems so much slower. And it's really frustrating because this is a fantastic product, really nice and lightweight, really good to have the screen built in. So again, with firmware updates, hopefully we'll see the RC2 can be brought back to life. Now the battery life on the Mini 4 Pro is okay, it's not great. Now this is gonna come heavily down to the limitation on this drone. Because of its size, this drone has to stay under 250 grams. So we're not gonna have the battery life as say the DJI Air 3 with its big battery. Because I mean, just look at the size of the battery. It's almost the same size as the Mini 4 Pro itself. So the downside to that is, is that the battery life on here is not fantastic and the battery life isn't as good as it was on the Mini 3 Pro either. 
You see, with all the great features that we've had included on the Mini 4 Pro and also new features since it's been released, all of these features on here, the intelligent flight features, these all take a hit to that battery life. So if you're using, say, the tracking features on here, your battery life is going to go down pretty fast. Hyperlapse goes down really fast. Master shots and quick shots, not too much. But if you're just actually using all the features available to you, don't expect a good battery life. Expect somewhere in the region of about 20 minutes. Now, you do have the option of getting the Battery Plus, which is a slightly heavier version of this. That will increase that battery life and will give you about an extra 10 minutes of real world battery life. They say about 47 minutes, but expect around about the half an hour mark, which is actually pretty good for a drone this size. The downside to that is, is that you can't buy that battery in a lot of countries around the world because it actually puts this drone over the 250 gram limit. But I would also highly recommend when you're buying this drone, don't just buy the one battery version, then it's gonna be really frustrating to you only having really small amounts of flight time when using this. So get the option where you get the three batteries. It comes in a nice charging case, you can charge these on the go, but then also with the three batteries, you're gonna easily get about an hour of flight time in real world conditions using that Mini 4 Pro, which for the majority of people is more than enough. This video is sponsored by my friends at Audio. Now music and sound effects is so important for video editing. Using good quality music and sound effects that matches your content is gonna completely transform it. Now Audio have got this really clean interface which makes searching for music super easy. They've also been on fire themselves adding new features and they've recently just added elements. So say you're searching for a song and you find that perfect song but you just want it to be in the background to your drone video. So you don't want it to be any lyrics. So you can actually go onto the lyrics section and you can remove it. So you have full control. They've also brought out a feature called an AI search. So you can search for say your favorite mainstream tracks. You can copy and paste that link. So I went onto YouTube and searched for Hans Zimmer, found some really famous tracks. I copied and pasted that link into the audio search engine and the results it gave me was like, how is this possible? It sounds just like it. So then I can use those tracks on my videos as well, all copyright free. This is a fantastic feature that nobody else is doing. And as well as access to these features, you also get thousands of music and sound effects with unlimited downloads, but they're also one of the cheapest as well. So you can try this platform completely for free. And then if you want to sign up, you can use discount code Darren70, and then you're gonna get 70% off the annual plan. This is fantastic. I highly recommend it. Go and check it out. Focus Track has got so much better on the Mini 4 Pro since the Mini 3 Pro. We now have the option to get your controller and then you can drag a box around you and then you can choose on this clock face exactly where you want the drone to track you from, either in a small circle or from a far away circle as well. This has been improved so much over the last two years and it's great to see. Now it still isn't perfect, but it is so much better. But because this drone is actually trying so hard to keep you centered in that frame all the time, it does get really close to twigs and trees and other objects. So it's really important to make sure you've got all of your sensors on, that's number one. But two, don't think that this drone is like invincible because it will crash into twigs on power lines for sure. And in focus track, this is where you, you can't become too complacent and just think, right, the drone's tracking me, everything's great always keep looking at that drone always make sure you can see where it is when it's tracking you so keep looking back if you say you're cycling but then also on the controller the pause button here that is going to be your number one button that you just want to kind of have your thumb or finger hovered over it all the time so when it's getting close to an object and you're thinking it's getting really close there hit that button and it will instantly pause in flight otherwise it might hit something and then crash to the ground and it's not the strongest of drones. So this is gonna come down to weight and none of these drones are waterproof or water resistant, which I hope we can get someday soon. That'd be fantastic. But this drone in particular, it probably is down to weight saving again. This has no covers on the ports at the back. Now the DJI Air 3 and the Mavic series, they all have covers over them. So I have flown this in rain, light rain, snow, now, a lot that no one in DJI is going to tell you that you can do that. A lot of these drones can withstand some light rain quite easily. But 
Unfortunately, the Mini 4 Pro, I wouldn't advise that because the USB-C and the SD card slot are completely exposed. Because if you get any water into there, you become quite unlucky and it is really possible to get water into that. It's not gonna end well with the electronics and wiring on this drone inside, is it? So be super careful. The propellers on the Mini 4 Pro are really small, but they're also pretty fragile as well. And it doesn't take much for these to either get damaged or to get some cracks in them. So I found this recently, didn't hit anything, didn't have any problems with it, brought it back to me and I looked at the propellers afterwards and noticed this one's got a few nicks in it. And then this one, the orange has come off it altogether at the top. And also look at all these little nicks at the top of it as well. So this is gonna affect the flight performance and worst case scenario, it could actually send this drone crashing to the ground. So annoyingly with the Mini 4 Pro, and I'm not sure if this is a weight saving exercise or not, but the Mini 4 Pro to actually change these propellers, you need to use the world's smallest screwdriver. Now on the Air 3 and the Mavic 3 Pro, to change the propellers, all you do is simply just push in, turn, and the propeller comes off, fantastic. With the Mini 4 Pro, you need to use this screwdriver. It actually comes with the drone, so you might actually find this in your bag, you may never have used this but you have to have this with you all the time because without this screwdriver, you're not gonna be able to then screw these propellers off. And this can be really frustrating because say you start flying your drone and you're about five minutes in and you hit some little twig and you notice your drone's making a bit of a funny noise, you bring it back and you've got some split propellers and you're there going, all right, get the propellers, I've got a new propeller here. Oh, how's this come off? Oh no, I remember that guy said to me, he needs some, some screwdriver, some little screwdriver, where is it? and you're searching your bag, and that screwdriver's not there. Because I'm sure a lot of you will join me, me especially, in telling you that this screwdriver, you will forget this so many times. So the tiny screwdriver, I would keep it in your drone bag. And if you don't have a drone bag, I don't know, you're gonna forget it. There's nothing I can say, you're gonna forget this. Now, if this could be changed in future versions, so these can just be pushed in, turned, pulled off, just like the Air 3, this would be fantastic. Now the Mini 4 Pro having this small size is a fantastic advantage, but I would say it's Achilles heel is that the wind resistance also is then gonna suffer and it, it does. We can't expect this drone to have really good wind resistance because it is a lot smaller than say the DJI Air 3, which has a fantastic wind resistance. This is gonna be the difference in jumping up to say the bigger drones like the DJI Air 3. You're gonna get much better performance when flying this in the air. And there's been quite a few occasions where in different countries around the world, different locations, that I've gone to send this drone up in the air and it's just been far too windy. I've had it hovered in place and it's been blown around all over the place that I've just had to land it and then missed out on them shots. Now, I don't think that the wind resistance is terrible and it's certainly not. It can actually withstand quite a bit, but in certain locations where it is naturally windy or on really windy days, you're not gonna be able to fly this like you would with the bigger drones. Now the Mini 4 Pro by its name is meant to be a pro drone, but when you turn this on out of the box, it's all geared around beginners, somebody who doesn't want to use pro settings. But the main thing I find on here, which you have to change, is that it is really sharp. So the over sharpening on here, it's getting almost like what a software on a phone would be like, so like an iPhone. So everything's like really over sharpened on iPhone or even like Samsung video. It's so sharp, it's not natural. It's not what your eyes can see. And we don't want your drone videos to look too sharp either. So what I'll do is I'll go into settings and I'll go to camera and then scroll down to where it says style. And then you'll see here it says sharpening. So turn this down to minus one. You'll get much more of a natural look. You can even turn it down on really bright days where it's gonna pump that sharpness up even more to minus two. But by default, it's set at zero. And sometimes I've weirdly turned my drone on after a firmware update and it's been set at plus one. So I would highly recommend, even if you're a beginner, no idea about color grading or color correction, anything like that. You just want your drone footage to look the very best straight out of camera. Just turn that down to minus one. So I do still highly recommend the Mini 4 Pro. It does have some drawbacks, but the advantages outweigh it by far. In this category, under 250 grams, nothing comes close to this. There's no competition. 
So if you want a small drone, this is the one that you need to get. I'll link it at the top of the description. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, just hit that like button. Let me know in the comments down below, do you have any issues that you don't particularly like about your Mini 4 Pro? Anything that you would like to see in future versions? Or any software issues that you would like to see that can be addressed? If you can let me know in the comments down below, I can feed them all back for you. Subscribe if you're new around here because I've got loads of videos coming out really soon. So it's about 18 to 19% of you who actually watch these videos are subscribers. If you just get it to one more percent to 20%, that'd be awesome. Thanks for watching this and have a fantastic day. See you in the next one.